On Monday, we talked about the, at the very end of Monday, we talked about the Friedel Crafts installation. So, first we talked about Friedel Crafts alkylation. And what was the biggest drawback about the alkylation? Cation rearrangements, exactly. So, the Friedel Crafts alkylation goes through a cation or things with a lot of cationic character, and what that results in is if you have a cation that can rearrange to give a more stable cation, it absolutely will. And so that is a major drawback to Friedel Crafts alkylation, in that if you want to make something, and I discussed an example at the end of lecture, that would be coming from a less stable cation, then the thing would rearrange, and we would get a different product. Uh, just to give a, well, I get, I'll give a quick review later on in the lecture. But remember what I talked about with alkylation chemistry, in that you have to worry about cationic rearrangements. So then we talked about the acylation. And with the acylation, uh, we take an acid chloride, so a carbonyl, with one carbon base substituent and one chlorine, and we take AlCl3, so we take our Lewis acid that we talked about a fair bit, and what is going to happen, just as with the fetal pass alkylation, the lone pair of electrons on the chlorine are going to attack the AOCL3 to give us this weird intermediate, which is very similar to the mechanism of the fetal pass alkylation. And then eventually, the lone pair of electrons and the lone pair on the oxygen are going to kick down, kicking up Cl plus, giving us AOCL4 minus, and then what we call an oxonium. Oxoniums are really, really activated electrolytes, right? They're SP, you have this positive charge, it just looks funky, it's really reactive. And so these are great substrates for you know, for a electrophilic aromatic substitution. So you take your aromatic ring and it will attack the uh, oxonium, giving us our cationic intermediate with an acyl group off. And then of course, as we've said many times throughout this series, then the base the anion that's generated in the electrophile activation will act as a base and grab this proton doing an E1 illumination to give us our product. So the Friedel Crafts acylation gives us uh, phenyl ketones or aromatic ketones. Uh, mechanism is not that different than any other, any of the other four or five blood filler aromatic substitutes we talked about. In that the first step is we take our electrophile, we take some kind of acid, either Lewis acid or Bronsted acid, and we activate it. They get an activated electrophile, which is what the chemistry goes through. And then, with, then the aromatic group attacks the activated electrophile, giving us a cationic intermediate, which quickly collapses by action of a base to regenerate aromaticity and give us our product. And so I had mentioned and then a major drawback. I mentioned that a major drawback of the Spino Crafts chemistry, of the Spino Crafts alkylation, was they wanted to make something with a alkyl halide like this. We wouldn't get a cat here. What we would get would be a so this is a chlorine here. We would get a cationic rearrangement of our activated electrophile where the hydrogen would jump into the chlorine plus carbon anti-bonding orbital. Remember, every single reaction is electron density going from somewhere, lone pair of electrons, high energy bond, into an anti-bonding orbital. I actually talked to the person who's doing the Mark uh, Chem 432 supplement course the other day, and I told him, you need to teach these reactions in the supplement course as electrons going in the lone pair you know, anti-bonding orbitals, because that's what is really happening. And so in this case, this carbon hydrogen bond is going to hop into this empty bonding orbital, and what that's going to give us is a, the more stable 
tertiary cation. And so this is the major drawback with Faust alkylation in that if you take something like this, it's just going to rearrange to give us the more stable cation. And the product we get is going to be this attacking the cation, giving us the different product that we want. So again, this is a review from my lecture uh, yesterday. And so with the Friedel Crafts isolation, <coughs> by the way, if I'm beating this like a drum, there's a reason. And this should be AOCL3, not AOCL4. Whereas with the Friedel Crafts isolation using this mechanism I just discussed, the product we will actually get would be. this, and then I gave you some conditions. I told you that we could, I had to do this in red to stand out, so we can take the ketone we form from a field press. We can do an LAH reaction to give us the alcohol. Frankly, for, for this, we could also do sodium borohydride, right? For ketones, we can do sodium borohydride or LAH. That will give us the alcohol. Then we can do PBR3 chemistry, and that would change the alcohol to the bromide. You're not needed anymore, so I'll make the space. And then, of course, we know we can take bromides and throw an LAH and replace the bromine with a hydrogen. So that's LAH again. And using those three steps, LAH or sodium monohydrate, PBR3 and then some more LAH, will allow us to replace the carbonyl in three steps with two carbon-hydrogen bonds. All right, and now by doing those three steps, we can now take a Friedel Crafts acylation product and turn it into a Friedel Crafts alkylation product. So if you can't make it by a Friedel Crafts acylation, oh, sorry, if you can't make it with a Friedel Crafts alkylation, there's a carbocation arrangement, you just do a Friedel Crafts acylation, and then you can do LAH, PBR3, and more LAH uh, in three sequential steps to make it the alkylation product. But there's a better way. So this is three steps, LAH, PBR3, and LAH. There are actually a number of conditions. Uh, there are a number of conditions that can take us here to here in one step. All right? And I'm not going to go over the mechanism of these conditions. But the first one you can use is called the Clemenson reduction. And I'm going to do this in green. Well, I actually have some reduction conditions in my notes. Check. It's zinc and mercury and HCl and heat. So the first conditions, you take zinc and mercury, HCl and heat. And this is called the Clemenson. Clemenson, I have no idea how to spell Clemenson. Since I'm in video, I don't want to uh, offend anyone, but the Clemenson reduction. Uh, it's in the book, it's Clemenson. Clemenson. I'm going to go Clem with an abbreviated period. So the Clemenson reduction, and zinc and mercury and main scale on heat will go directly from here to our product replacing the carbonyl with two hydrogens. So instead of doing the LAH, PBR3, LAH, it may be much easier to exaggerate Clemenson reduction, zinc, mercury, and HCl. But it'll give us the same product. I drew it in black this time. Clemenson reduction in one step 
Well, there's been several steps. One more reaction I want to show you that will also take a Pinot Crafts acylation product and replace the carbonyl with two hydrogens to give us a Pinot Crafts uh, alkylation product is called the Wolf Kishner. And this is a mechanism I'll go over in chapter 16 because the mechanism will make sense in chapter 16. If I go over the mechanism in chapter 15, you guys will look at me like I'm an alien and say, what the heck's going on? So I'm going to give you the conditions for now, but we won't go over the mechanism until chapter 15, sorry, chapter 16, because you really need to understand the chapter 16 material to understand this mechanism. But the book Kishner production, we take uh, hydrazine. Does anyone know what hydrazine is most well known for? What is hydrazine? Oh, rocket fuel. Yeah. Hydrazine is, or well, used to be, I don't know if it still is, but at one point it was rocket fuel. So you take hydrazine, N2H4, so you take hydrazine, and then you take KOH, so potassium hydroxide, and heat. And in one foul swoop, you go from your carbonyl, once again, to your replacing of carbonyl with the CH2. So once again, these conditions, both the Clemenson and then the Wolf Kishner. So Wolf W dot C, Wolf Kishner, I think it's W dot K actually. W dot K, the Wolf Kishner reduction, will do what this LAH PDR3 LAH does in three steps in one step. I will never go over the mechanism of the Wolf Kishner, of the uh, not Wolf Kishner. I will, I will not in this class go over the Clemenson reduction mechanism. But I will go over in chapter 16 the Wolf Kishner reduction mechanism. <coughs> Nonetheless, these are two good things to take a FC a field crafts isolation AC for isolation product and turn it into a field crafts alkylation product. So pretty much what those these reactions show you is anything you can do with a field crafts alkylation, you can probably do with a field crafts isolation, followed by any of these conditions I just showed you. So the safest thing to do if you're worried about cationic rearrangement, don't screw around with the Frito Crafts alkylation. Just go straight for a Frito Crafts isolation. And do a Clemenson or a Wolf Kishner reduction to get your alkylated product. Uh, so that leads us to the next part of chapter 15. Which is so far, I got you five mechanisms of five different electrical agronomic substitutions. I am not going to go over these mechanisms again. Uh, just realize electrophile activation, attack by the aromatic system, E1 to regenerate aromaticity, and that's the typical mechanism. And I already, I've shown you some of these mechanisms already. Now what we're going to worry about is, right now we've only used benzene, right? The only substrates we have used are benzene. What happens if you have a substituted Benzene ring. Uh, let's say, let's have an electron donating group to start off with. So let's put a O methyl group. So mono substituted benzene rings with electron donating groups. The electron donating group is going to direct the chemistry to the pair and ortho position. So whenever you have an electron donating group, so EDGs, and I'll show you in a second, but the answer is how do you figure it out? Is you just draw the resonance structure and ask where the partial charges are. But electron donating groups will direct the, uh, the chemistry to the ortho or para positions. So we call electron donating groups ortho para directors. Further
furthermore, electron donating groups, not only do they directly the support cell impair, impair it, they increase the rate of the reaction. So electron donating groups don't only direct the chemistry to occur in either the ortho or the parent positions, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. They also, I guess no one heard that, okay. <laughs> uh, not only do they uh, uh, direct it to the ortho and parent positions, they also speed up the reaction. Why would an electron donating group speed up a aromatic, elect uh, electrophilic aromatic substitution? It has more electron density to be... Uh, Absolutely. Right? So, electrophilic aromatic substitution is just an example of a nucleophile, the aromatic group, attacking an electrophile. And we know from SN1 and SN2 and all this nucleophilic chemistry we've talked about for some time, is that the higher energy your electrons, the better nucleophile. Well, what's one way we make a, a pi system more reactive? Well, we raise the HOMO. How do we raise the HOMO? We put more electron density in the HOMO. So, Electron donating groups, which are donating electrons to the pi system, are don't, it's, they're donating electron density, making those existing electrons in the pi system higher in energy. So electron donating groups, I know, I'll, I'll show you via resonance in a second after I talk about electron withdrawal groups real quickly. But electron donating groups, they direct ortho and para, and they speed the reaction up. So, and faster and L caps, because for some reason my mind ca caps lock was just on. <laughs> Faster reaction. And in the deal with the older stuff, everything we said was an electron donating group is still an electron donating group. So alkyl groups like methyls, uh, OM, like things with oxygens uh, directly attached to device systems, so like uh, uh, phenols, alcohols, uh, amines at this position. Everything we said was an electron donating group when we talked about the Dillis Alder is still an electron donating group. So conversely, electron withdrawal groups an example of an electron withdrawal group is a nitro group. So first off, do you think an electron withdrawal group is going to speed the reaction up or slow it down? It's going to slow it down because it's removing electron density. So, so EDGs, slow reaction down. All right. What's up? Oh, EWGs, thank you. So electron withdrawal groups, like nitro groups, they slow the reaction down and they direct the reaction to the meta position. So electron withdrawal groups direct to the meta. So they slow the reaction down and they're meta directing. So in general, once again, electron withdrawn groups are going to be slower reactions that are going to occur at the meta things, at the meta positions. And electron donating are going to be faster and they're going to be parts of para directing. Yes? Great question. Uh, electron donating groups work. Electron donating groups almost always work. And I'll get into why at the end of this chapter. But in general, uh, <coughs> electron donating groups, for the most part, act via resonance, as I'll show you in a second. And so there's a big resonance component to the electron density dumping into the pi system. Whereas a lot of electron withdrawn groups, they do have resonance, but there's a larger inductive effect component to an electron withdrawn group or drawing electrons. And in general, uh, resonance is usually a stronger effect than the inductive effect. And my favorite analogy along those lines is resonance is like radio to the internet. So radio to the internet goes through wires. And so you can listen to any radio station in the world online, assuming they have an online platform. But you, cannot, you can only listen to local radio stations on through-wave radio 
because you know they go through the waves, and the inductive effect is just the same as a rail wave, just slightly different. And so through wires, things go further. Through air, things go slower. So since the inductive effect is a through space interaction, uh, it's not as it's not going to have as strong of an effect as the resonance effects because resonance effects are through bonds. Inductive effects are through space. So first off, before I get into examples, let me show you why electron donating groups speed the reaction up into ortho para. And it's, it's, it's an interplay between resonance and inductive effects. But resonance is the big thing. And so the best way to describe it is going to be via resonance. So, so let's take a good electron donating group. Uh, so I can have methyl, although methyl is more of an inductive effect. So methyl is an okay electron donating group, but it's not the best electron donating group. Methoxy or phenol, so OR, they're good electron donating groups, much better than methyl, because an OR has the lone pair of electrons at the oxygen, which can dump into the pi system and give us resonance structure. So OME and OR are good. Uh, based on that logic, can anyone tell me something that's better than an OR as an electron donating group? Next, NH2. So all these trends we talked about electronegativity earlier in the class still hold. And so since nitrogen is less electronegative than oxygen, it will be holding onto its lone pair of electrons even less, thus donating more of them to the uh, pi system. So amines are better electron donating groups than ethers. So nitrogen is better than oxygen. And so just for this case, uh, instead of doing aniline, or in this case, the R equals O methyl, I'm going to do R equals NH2. But realize the analysis is exactly the same. The resin structures don't change much, uh, so it will hold. All right. So first off, what's the hybridization of this nitrogen? What's the hybridization of this nitrogen? SP2, right? Because it's adjacent to a double bond. So because it's adjacent to a double bond, it can resonate into it. And remember what we've said, if it can resonate into a pi system, it's going to rehybridize so that it's SP2, so that it can donate selective density. Because if it does that, resonance equals electron delocalization, and electron delocalization almost always equals a stabilization. So if it can resonate into a pi system, it will. Meaning, it will rehybridize the sp2 so that it can. So aniline, if you look at it and side view, here's the pi system that's aromatic. The nitrogen is going to rehybridize, so it's going to be going from something that you think would be tetrahedral to something that's going to be trigonal planar because it's sp2 now. So that the lone pair of electrons here can overlap with the pi system. So once again, these electrons are not in the ring. And because the electrons are not in the ring, they do not contribute to 